kind of pop novelist to uh, try to uh, pre pretend to be a uh, uh, neurologist. Seven neurologists. A little, little bit of history. Uh, Nakalava City was really described very early, it's like 1980, you know, 1880. And then on the 30s, we started to use steel mills. On the 60s, that is when we have a REM sleep discovered. And we found out that Nakalava City is REM related illness. <laughs> and in the 1990s, that the FDA approved for the modafinil. And everybody knows that medication is called Provigil. Uh, and in, in the early 2000, that's when we discovered hypocritic. Anybody know this word? Anybody know this word? Probably is new. <coughs> what does that mean, this word? As a little neuropeptide, as a little neuropeptide is and discovery. In 2002, we have a new medicine, it's called Zyra. And up, up to now, we don't have anything new. That's those are early people. <coughs> about a narcolepsy. Um, it used to be everybody has narcolepsy. Right? If you're sleepy, you go to sleep lab and you get a diagnosis, you get a narcolepsy. So and now we have very strict de uh, definition of narcolepsy. It's really just a neurological problem. It's not a pulmonary problem. And, it, and it's, the definition is narcolepsy <laughs> caused by hypocritical. <coughs> Deficiency associated with uh, this uh, immunological disease. And this, this one is called the clan living syndrome. The other one is a syndrome unexplained by <coughs> not a deficiency of the hypercritic. We really need to emphasize on this. Emphasize on this. It's, very, it's not that uncommon disease. And actually, it's good news for neurologists because it's, it's just, just as common as Parkinson's disease. We see pa Parkinson's all the time, you know. I even walk on the street, I say, that guy has Parkinson's, you know. His face doesn't change. And it's usually the answer is that adolescence in the early stage and take about 15 years to get a diagnosis. And uh, there's about 150,000 people affected. That's, that shows the early onset, how early it is. It's like before 20 years old. Etiology. And the most important etiology is now we found out that it has, has something to do with flu. If you get a flu, you may get a narcolepsy. Uh, the vaccine, especially in Europe, after they get a flu vaccine, some of them has a, a start having narcolepsy. Uh, what is really going on? Has nothing to do with the lung. Has nothing to do with the lung. And has something to do with the brain. It's in the lateral hypothalamic Brain tissue. I even cannot uh, pronounce this word, and neurologists know how to do it. But I, you know, it's like uh, they have that that's called a hypocrine cell <coughs> has marked reduced. This is a lactic patient. There's not much cell left, but this one has lots of cell left. Okay. And if you tap those narcolepsy patients, spinal fluid, and you can find out that the hypocritic level is markedly reduced. It's markedly reduced. And this is a normal, and this is the one without a cataplexy, and this one has been markedly reduced. Symptoms. 
you know, it's harder to really diagnose real Black Lung Syndrome. I, I never, myself never said, uh, you know, I try to diagnose as a classical one. It's harder to diagnose. Lots of people present in my office with, oh, I feel very sleepy all the time. I do the, all the diagnosis. I cannot find a classical diagnosis. The sleepiness. Sleepiness is, that is the major complaint, you know. It come to the office, I feel very sleepy, sleepy in the school, uh, you know, sleep dry. I mean, some of the nocturnal patients, if they take a nap and they feel refreshed, and then some are not. The other one is the nocturnal people, they wake up frequently. They don't have a whole night of sleep. They wake up every hour, every hour, and every hour. So the total sleep time is okay, but they just cannot maintain the sleep. Cataplexy. Cataplexy is a hard, you know, anybody knows what is the cataplexy is? Even I have difficult time to understand it. It's basically cataplexy is you are, if you are emotional, very emotional, you are laughing, you are angry, you just like that. You fall down and you fall asleep. Have you seen anybody like that? Have you seen? If you say it, you must have a chiropractic, that's diagnostic, that's diagnostic. And myself has some experience, sometimes, I, I, I remember when I was in a homeroom fellowship, I wanted to uh, see a doctor, I saw my, my knees like this. And I asked the doctor, so what's going on with it? Because I don't know, you can have a cat, can you breathe, so what's going on with it? But, you know, I think that this also is a symptom of the chiropractic, you just leave like a buckling like that. But I don't know if I have it, but anyway. And also startling, if you try, if you try to talk to something, you get angry, you cannot talk, it's one of the signs you have a cataplex. Think about it if you have yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hypnodogly <laughs> hallucination, ah, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it means that before you fall asleep, you start a dream. And a dream usually is very frightening. And my experience is, I don't know if I have that class or not, I do sometimes feel that, you know, when I drive home from here to, from Orlando to my home, take two hours, half a week, I start to feel like I have a voice talk to me. And I'm so sleepy, I've taken a nap. That might be just a hypnotic hallucination. Very, very dream. That's another symptom of the narcolepsy. It's not a diagnostic, but it, it can be scary if you dream at night time and then a mouse, a mice close to your bed and you're scared to death and you wake up yawning and it's vivid. You cannot tell the real and you are dreaming, you're just so scared. This one, anybody experience sleep paralysis? Anybody? You know, my first experience of sleep paralysis when I was a teenager, I remember when I take a nap, and I wake up in the middle of the nap. I just cannot move. I yawning, try turning, and all kinds of tricks. Cannot wake up. And somehow I can see people are walking around. I can see people around and talk to me, but I just cannot move. And that's very scary. For somehow, miraculously, I wake up, I'm so happy, and you know, I thought I can wake up. I, you know, I thought I got a stroke or I'm dead. You know. <coughs> and the nightclub is associated with, with loss of other units, loss of other units. I uh, just want to let you know, sleep apnea, periodic limb movement, ground behavior disorder, sleep walking. Also, nightclub people has mild obesity, and they also have depression. And the diagnostic of a classical lock napsy with the cataplexy, they have a, there's the new definitions, you have to have a CNS fluid typically less than this, one third of a normal. You have the positive MSRT or short sleep lung RAM latency. <coughs> you can do many things you want to diagnose narcolepsy. Uh, you, 
you got, you got a history, and you see someone has a cataplexy, and uh, they will say, and also you can do the upper score, and can you also do the lab test, you send it to me, and we do polysomnography, MSRT, and also you can do HAA typing or CS flow level. Uh, we, we really do this. No, we don't do that. We academic center, like every, how we do that? That is the upper score. And that's not class of people are sleepily scared. See, the average is much higher compared to control. That's the old night sleep study. It shows the normal people, normal people, and not class of people, they have they have like early REM onset. And they have lots of REM sleep. During the day, they have lots of REM sleep. And lots of wakelings, lots of wakelings. And the normal people have less wakelings. There's another one. This shows how people are sleepy and uh, how many REM onset for the MS. Uh, MLST study. MLF study is not really very good study. It's sometimes it's hard to interpret. It's very hard to interpret, uh, and, and can be very false positive. Now about the treatment, and uh, fortunately, and uh, not, not many medicines are like the uh, urology treated sage has tons of them. We don't have many, so we don't need to spend a lot of time to talk about. It. One of them is a modafinil. Modafinil is the increase the increase the release of the orexin or histamine. That's how it work. How it work. Uh, it is moderate effectiveness. It's moderate. Okay. And uh, consider first line therapy. And it also, uh, if you try to practice, don't use. It. And it can cause some problem. Don't use on children. It's not approved. This medicine, this medicine is called Xyron, and it's sodium oxalate, and it's really revolutionary medicine. It's, it's really help not class people. They really clearly see big difference. They have reduced the cataplexy, reduced the sleepiness, and uh, reduced the sleep paralysis. And they don't even some of people, they don't, some of the patients, they don't even have to use. Stimulants, they don't have to use stimulants, just use this medicine alone, and uh, it'll be okay. All right. Stimulants, uh, that you use a lot in the clinic, you use a lot in the clinic. And it's a it's, it's, uh, it's scheduled medicine, you really worry about the you know, addiction, but I don't think, I never worry, I, I thought there's no addiction. Just be careful with the high blood pressure, or if that's a problem, you send it to a cardiologist. Uh, I don't talk about this. This is all investigation drug, investigation drug, investigation drug. And this medicine is for depression, but it's treat, good treatment for cataplexy. If somebody has cataplexy, this medicine can treat. Investigate drug. And that's me doing a study, city study on myself. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Professor, a doctor. Yeah. A question. Sleep problem is I, I this question is for both the neurologist and the commoner. Because the sleep problem is such kind of a very common problem and also the the sleep problem, like you said already, you try to be a neurology because sleep problem actually is a neurology problem. So why is sleep problem right now is all handled by a pulmonist instead of neurology? Well, because the uh -huh. nightclub people compare the relative rare and the sleep apnea, you can say that it's 95%, 95% sleeping and the sleep apnea is due to sleep apnea. So the drug is sleep apnea, that's why we handle it. It actually initially is a neurologist we took uh, we took the we use of that thing. Okay. We, we're not a, we're not a founder. We're not a pioneer. We just uh, take the field over. <laughs> <laughs> we take the field over because the 95 percent of it is uh, practice. But yeah. 